So Google just dropped something wild, a full stack AI agent that can research like a human, double check its facts and refuses to answer until it's absolutely sure, which is rare and incredibly refreshing to see. It's built with Gemini 2.5 at the core and Langgraph running the logic and its ability to break things down, verify and adapt on the fly is what makes it stand out. So let's talk about it. At first glance, this might seem like old news. Haven't models been pulling info from the web for a while now? Sort of, but most large language model browse modes are still pretty shallow. They run a single search, skim the top results and move on without checking if the info actually answers the question. That kind of one shot approach works for basic stuff, but falls apart on anything complex or fast moving. What Google and a swarm of open source contributors just released takes a very different approach. They combine Gemini 2.5 with Langgraph to build an agent that knows when it doesn't know enough. It runs structured search and reflect loops, keeps refining its queries until every gap is covered, then writes a well-supported answer with direct links to the sources it pulled from. The result reads more like a research summary than a chatbot reply. The structure behind this thing is clean and purposeful. The interface runs in a modern browser setup that stays fast and smooth, while all the real processing power lives behind the scenes in a dedicated backend. The two sides are completely independent, which means you can restart or tweak one without affecting the other. Ideal for testing or customizing how the whole thing behaves. It's all laid out in a way that's easy to follow, especially once you dive into the core logic file where you can see exactly how the system decides when to keep digging or when it's ready to answer. But real quick, if you've been following all this AI news and thinking, okay, this is cool, but what can I actually do with it? you're definitely not alone. That's why we created the AI Income Blueprint. It shows you seven ways regular people are using AI to build extra income streams on the side. No tech skills needed and you can automate everything pretty easily. The guide contains simple proven methods using tools I often talk about on this channel. Download it free by clicking the link in the description. All right, back to Google's new AI agent. Now here's how a typical session unfolds. Say you ask something technical, like how three stack HBM manages to stay below 85 degrees during long intense workloads. The agent doesn't just respond with whatever's in memory, it first breaks the question down, generates precise search terms and queries the web. Then it reads through the results, evaluates whether they answer every part of your question, thermal limits, architecture specifics, real world use cases, and if not, it keeps going. The system is designed to repeat this cycle until it's confident that it has the full context. Only at that point does it put everything together into a complete answer with clickable citations already embedded in the response so you can verify anything instantly. What's important here is that the answer doesn't show up until the agent finishes the whole process. You won't see it typing out incomplete thoughts or rushing to guess. There's a short delay, sure, but the result is a fully formed, well-sourced response that reads like something you'd expect from someone who actually did their homework. That kind of precision is a big deal for researchers, support teams, and anyone working in fields where bad info isn't just annoying, it's expensive. Setting it up locally is actually pretty smooth. You install Node and Python, drop in your Gemini API key, and run a couple commands to get the front end and back end talking. Once it's live, the UI loads in your browser, and you can see exactly how the agent processes your questions behind the scenes. If you tweak how it looks or change how it thinks, like adjusting a setting in the graph file, it responds instantly. It's the kind of setup that makes testing and experimenting feel fast, hands-on, and honestly addictive. Now deployment. When you're ready to go live, the entire front end and back end run together under one roof, so there's no need to juggle separate servers. Redis takes care of live updates behind the scenes, keeping things fast and responsive, while Postgres tracks everything the agent does, from conversations to memory, making sure nothing gets lost or duplicated. Everything's already bundled into a Docker image that includes all the moving parts, front end, back end, and static files. And then you've got a simple setup file that launches everything with a single command. The brain of the agent, the memory system, and even an optional stats dashboard if you want it. You just paste in your access keys, press start, and your personal AI agent runs locally in your browser. And if you ever want to make it available online, you can easily do that too. Just add some limits so nobody burns through <laughs> your API usage while you sleep. 
Developers who care about license restrictions can breathe. It's Apache 2.0. Fork it, remix it, drop it into a paid SaaS, no viral clauses to haunt you. That openness pairs nicely with the region agnostic design. Whether you're working from North America, Vienna, Bangalore, or Jakarta, all you need is that Gemini key. Everything else is plain Python, plain React, and infra staples like Redis and Postgres that every cloud provider offers. Let's talk about what actually makes this agent feel smart. It's the way Landgraph controls the flow of everything behind the scenes. It works kind of like a decision map where each step, like generating a search, checking results, or deciding what to do next, is a separate block, and you can easily swap in new ones. Want it to check a medical database or run a custom tool before giving you an answer? You can do that with just a couple changes, no need to rebuild the whole system. It's clear, flexible, and reacts instantly when you tweak it, which makes it way more fun to build on. Now about performance, yes, the agent takes extra steps to think things through, but it's designed to be smart about that too. You can control how many times it loops when refining a question, and since it only gives a final answer once everything's gathered, it skips the usual mess of half-formed replies. You also don't get that weird token-by-token -token typing effect. It waits, gets everything right, and if you're curious what it's doing under the hood, the logs show every step as it searches, checks, and decides, which is super helpful if anything goes wrong. A tiny but telling touch, the make file includes clearly labeled targets for demos and testing, which shows the devs aren't just tossing code on GitHub and walking away, they're building this for real world use with ongoing updates, community input, and flexibility in mind. Early contributors include folks from Hugging Face, so you can expect fast iteration, think new connectors for other search APIs, built-in evaluation tools, and possibly a plugin system for more specialized models down the line. Visual polish matters, especially when you're showing off what this thing can do. And the combo of Tailwind and Shad CN really delivers. Thanks to Vite, it strips out anything you're not using, so the final build stays super lightweight. Still, you get everything you'd want, flexible layouts, pop-ups, and a slick dark mode, all controlled with simple class names. For teams that usually spend days arguing over button styles or layout grids, having a clean design system baked in saves a ton of time and keeps everyone focused. Now, during normal use, the back end and front end run on separate addresses while you're testing. But once you switch to the Docker version, everything moves under a single address. If the app suddenly stops working or gives you a blank screen, it's probably just a tiny config setting that needs to be updated so the pieces can talk to each other. It's easy to fix, but good to know up front. What's great is that background tasks don't freeze if you close the tab. Redis handles the real-time streaming and Postgres remembers the entire session. So you can ask a long research question, close the browser, come back later and pick up right where you left off. It all just works. And if you ever want to bolt on more advanced memory, like semantic search with embeddings, you can. Langgraph makes that easy to plug in. As for security, it keeps things sane. Keys live in environment variables, not hard-coded in the code base, so the Gemini and Langsmith API keys stay private. The Docker file expects those values through .env or build args. Redis and Postgres should always stay behind local or internal addresses, and Fast API doesn't expose anything it doesn't need to. Nothing fancy, just the right defaults and smart comments already baked into the compose file to guide you. And because it's open source under Apache 2.0, you've got full freedom. Whether you're an enterprise adding this to a product, a researcher tweaking workflows, or a hobbyist replacing Gemini with a lightweight Llama model, the license doesn't get in your way. Most of the logic is modular too. Just adjust the generation or reflection nodes, maybe clean up the prompts a bit, and you're off. Look, most people still think AI is some distant future, but regular folks are already using it to build income streams quietly, behind the scenes. If you want to see how they're doing it without tech skills or quitting their job, download the AI Income Blueprint. It's totally free, the link's in the description, but it won't stay free forever. One last note, it's built for Python 3.8 by default, but everything works fine on newer versions like 3.12. The code base already uses type hints and modern syntax, and FastAPI supports async routes. The only thing running sync for now is the search API calls, but you could easily switch those to async 
and get better performance if you're running multiple threads or jobs in parallel. And here's the real difference. You can ask it something super specific or kind of obscure, stuff that would usually confuse a regular chatbot, and it doesn't just make something up. Instead, it actually goes out, digs through real sources like official docs and forums, and gives you answers you can trust with links to prove it. No guessing, no fluff, just solid info, like you're getting help from someone who actually knows how to do proper research. So now I wanna know, do you think AI agents like this are the future of online research, or is it still too early to trust them? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and if you liked this breakdown, hit that subscribe button, give it a like, and thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.